Amen. Let's just buy it in prayers. Let's buy it in prayers. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to thank you for another time. We want to give you praise because of this wonderful uh, celebration of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for all the wonderful things that you did for us about 3,000 years ago. Lord, we glorify you in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we look into your word, we ask that you will speak to every one of us in the name of Jesus. And we pray that the benefit of the cross, Father, will be appropriated into our lives. That even after today, our lives will not remain the same again. Holy Spirit of God, we thank you, Lord, because we know you've answered. We see all the glory there, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Want to... Um, welcome everyone once again and happy easter to you and i believe this is a wonderful moment to celebrate you know this wonderful season as believers and i have no doubt in my spirit that god himself um you know as as orchestrated you know this season so that we can use this moment as believers across the world to remember what the lord jesus went through on the cross of calvary and we want to bless God because the death of Jesus is not in vain. It would have been in vain if Jesus had died and had not resurrected. But we want to bless God because Jesus died and also he resurrected on the third day. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 55. 1 Corinthians 15 from verse 55, the scripture says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory to our Lord Jesus Christ. Want to bless the name of the Lord? You know, for this scripture, it says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? We can say that as believers today that death has lost a sting we can say that as believers today that jesus gave every one of us the key to the victorious life when he died and he resurrected on the third day in colossians chapter 2 verse 15 colossians chapter 2 and in verse 15 the scripture says and having spoiled principalities and powers he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it, having spoiled principalities. This tells us that when Jesus died, he went right there, right into hell to collect the key of hell and of death. And what did he do? When he did that, he handed us the key of victory. He handed us the key for us to become, you know, people that have been empowered to live the victorious life right here on earth. He went, he went into hell and he grabbed the key from the ends of the devil so that the devil can no longer hold us captive, so that the devil can no longer have us as slaves under his grip as a result of the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. But I would just want to share with us very quickly you know the death of jesus christ you know today we can talk as believers today we can fellowship we can go to church we can connect with other people across the world as believers because the death of jesus was not in vain and it and, and a sign that the death was not in vain was because he resurrected on the third day you know at the age of 33 jesus was condemned to the death penalty and it wasn't just any kind of death it was a gruesome kind of death and back in the days in in israel i don't know if that is still obtainable now you know the the, the crucifixion is a kind of death that is meted out to the most terrible of criminals to the most dangerous kind of criminals and jesus was subjected to such gruesome death and you know in his own case it was different Rather than for him to be tied to the cross, in his own case, he was nailed on to that cross. It was a dreadful death that Jesus died. 
nails were driven not just through his palm now but nails were driven through his wrist it wasn't a spam as we're made to believe in movies the nail were driven through his wrist and you know in science in biology or uh, uh, of course we have some medical people here they will tell us that there is a tendon right on the wrist and these soldiers they understand that if they are able to take that nail a six to eight inch nail was driven through the wrist of jesus that it will shift the tendon there and that tendon is connected to the back part of jesus such that his back will become like an hack so he would need to rely on that position for him to be able to breathe because he was going through serious excruciating pain but not just that alone they did not just drive those nail to his two wrists they brought his two legs together and then they nailed those legs to the cross of calvary so now jesus was meant to hang and you know on his leg and on his hands he was made to alternate to support the force the weight of his body on his legs and then he was made to also depend on the back side to be able to breathe it was such a terrible terrible excruciating death that jesus went through but you know before that time he had gone through terrible beating the armor that was used to drive the nails into his hands the crown of thorns that was placed upon his head the beatings on his body the lashings that he got he was tied to the pole and then he was beaten mercilessly and jesus was helpless as it were the son of god who had all power in heaven to command the host of heaven to come down and fight for him but because of the joy that was set before him he endured the pain because of you and because of me what a wonderful wonderful price that the lord jesus paid he sacrificed his life so that yourself and myself we can have life and life you know forevermore he endured this pain for like three hours on the cross he was suspended between the heavens and the earth and do you know that there was a time when the blood was no more coming out he has you know all the blood he had was gone it it was now left with water just water alone coming out from the body because the blood was gone it was believed that the body of a man contains about 3.5 liters of water, of blood so all those 3.5 liters of blood were gone completely and just water started pouring out of his body the soldiers they were not content they took a spear on the left and on the right and they pierced a side you know and those things let loose again and the son of man was held up there right right there on the cross the disciples that were within every one of them fled except for one the people that were singing hosanna in the highest a few days earlier everyone deserted him and he was made to bear his own cross upon his own body it is believed that the cross that jesus carried weighed about 30 kg and that cross with all the pain the body broken he was able to carry that cross with him even to golgotha even right to calvary rather the place of the skull and before all that happened happened unto him but jesus christ he knew the purpose and the reason why he has come to die even for the sin of man and he knew all of that before before he was killed he knew the reason why he came to die on the cross of calvary he did not argue with them he did not contend with them he gave himself absolutely and completely even unto this and at the end of the day he gave up the ghost but you know the beautiful thing is this that jesus died and yet he came back to life and on this beautiful easter morning we are celebrating the resurrection of the lord jesus christ that he walked the whole two kilometers carrying a 30 kg cross on his back and being nailed on calvary but yet he did not even contend with his accusers just so that you can have life so that i might have life what a wonderful thing what a wonderful privilege that we can share even today that we can rejoice and we can celebrate that you know the reason why we are christians today 
is because our savior our lord you know died and then he came back to life but you know it's not always the case we have all the people we have you know our people that have attempted to do what jesus did that they will die and they will resurrect but then they failed even trying to do that i read a story of a man called the lawrence the lawrence had a lot of followers he was a powerful magician and during his eight days he boasted that he was going to die and after three days he also will come back to life and then he was the man he was the man that edited the seven books of moses and of course moses did not write any six or seven book it was an occultic book but he, he edited that book it was a deeply occultic book a terrible magician he was and he boasted to his friends and said you know what to his followers father that i'm going to die and on the third day i will come back to life hallelujah so now when he died and uh, about the time when it was third on the third day it was said you know from the story i read that the ground where he was buried was shaking as if he will come back to life but you know he, he, that story tells us that in an attempt to come back to life a thunder struck from heaven and sent him back to the grave i want you to know something that jesus is the all-powerful one the one that died and there was a reason why he died is so that you can have life and so that i can have life and god has given him all power in heaven and on earth and that power has been bestowed unto us as believers that power has been given unto us as christians that we can also exhibit the same power we can also display such wonders in our time and in our days today can i tell you today that jesus has paid it all jesus has settled every debt whatever thing you're going to go through the sickness he has paid the price the infirmity he has paid the price whatever it is he has settled everything it is just for us to walk into that grace and begin to leave that out i want you to know because jesus has paid that price your joseph can no more remain in egypt because jesus has paid that price the fire of nebuchadnezzar can no more consume you because jesus has paid that price your daniel cannot remain even in the lion's den because the price has been settled jesus is lord in heaven and on earth intellectuals may fail as they are failing today they are trying to find a solution to the terrible pandemic that is going on and up until this moment there's no breakthrough in that area we are praying we are trusting god that something is going to change but now it's telling you that jesus is the only answer because intellectuals are failing the academics are stumbling as as they are trying to get things going to find a solution to what is going on in the world it's only the lord that can make even a way for us philosophers may make mistakes but god's word will never fail god will never ever make mistake we can always run to him that name that jesus has given to us that name is a strong tower and the bible says the righteous can run into it and they can find salvation even for their life i want to tell you today that's why you must not lose your connection with god you must not lose your connection with jesus you must not lose your contract with him and maybe you have not signed a contract yet i'm talking about the contract of salvation maybe you have not signed yours with jesus you can make it you know today today the day of easter to establish a contract with the lord jesus and say father i'm stepping into a new lease of life even with you i want to walk with you all through and i tell you that you'll see god working things out even for you in philippians chapter 3 and in verse 10 philippians chapter 3 verse 10 the bible says that i may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering hallelujah god is telling us today that i may know him you have to put your name in there that you may know him that i may know him and the power of his resurrection do you know that if the power of resurrection begins to work in your life you begin to see things happen all over 
you begin to see how God will begin to move things even in your direction. Why? Because the power of resurrection is real in your life. Oh, the Lord, there's a power that comes with the resurrection of Jesus. There's a power that comes when you connect, when you begin to understand the victory that the Lord has given to us in the place of resurrection. If you can allow that power to come into your life, it can begin to work things out for you. It can begin to change even things for you. And I want to use this moment as I close to encourage you, to challenge you in this difficult moment, in this trying moment of our faith as believers. Let's turn our Bibles to Romans chapter 8 verse 35. Romans chapter 8 verse 35. What's the scripture telling us? I want to encourage you with that even today. Romans chapter 8 verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Oh, I know things are tough below. But look at the moment of Easter. That Jesus came to this world singularly for yourself and for myself. Look at this moment that Jesus paid the ultimate price for yourself and for myself. And now he's telling you, I have done all of this for you. I have made it easy for you. I want you to enjoy the life that only I can give even unto you in this turbulent moment. He said, who shall separate you from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? That's the question today. The world is going through a very difficult moment. Shall tribulation separate you from the love of Christ? The world is going through a very die hard moment. God is saying to us today, will this tribulation cut you off from the Lord Jesus? Is it the distress of your soul? Is it a distress within your family? Is it a distress within your home? Is it the persecution? You, even today we look all around the world. The believers are going through terrible persecutions. Christians are being killed all around the world. But the Lord is saying, will that separate us as believers? Will that turn us away from Jesus? From that price that they paid on the cross of Calvary? Will it be famine? There are many people that are finding it difficult to even feed. You know, normally in this very terrible moment, is it the peril? The peril by day, the peril by night? Is it the peril? and the sword the killings all over the place the bible says in verse 36 as it is written for thy sake we are killed all the day long we are counted as sheep for the slaughter in this moment of uncertainties when believers have been ridiculed when church has been ridiculed god is saying even to us that for thy sake we are killed all the day long we are counted as sheep for the slaughter in verse 37 i want this to be your 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 motto i want this to be the word that will guide you i want this to be the word that will encourage your heart he said nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us praise the lord how are we conquerors because jesus paid that price jesus died and he resurrected and as a result of that he has handed you and myself the key to become victorious he has handed you and myself the key to become conquerors in this world say nay in all of these things i don't know what it is you're going through but one thing i can tell you is this in all of these things put everything into one box call them by name one after the other tribulation pestilence crisis whatever it is called uncertainties of life the travails of life the vicissitudes of life in all of these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us in verse 38 for i am persuaded i don't know if you're persuaded like myself but i can tell you this i am persuaded my family we are persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come hallelujah nor eyes nor death nor any creature hallelujah not even angels not even principalities not even the powers of this world not even the things that i can see i can feel now not even the things to come the uncertainties even ahead in my future not the height of it not the depth of it nor any other creature in the world no matter where that creature is coming from shall be able shall be able 
that should be your word today shall be able in whatever thing you do shall be able to separate us hallelujah is that your confession today in this morning of the resurrection that none of these things will move you that in this morning of easter you will resolve to serve god more you resolve to follow after christ more you resolve to pray more you resolve to dig into the word of god more you resolve to seek after righteousness more he said in all of these things not none of these shall separate me from the love of god which is in christ jesus our lord and do you know what beloved whatever it is you're trusting god for jesus already signed that check whatever it is you're trusting god for jesus already paid the price for every lash that came upon his back i mean that has taken care of every infirmity every sickness for the nail that was driven into his palm that has taken care of whatever it is you may be going through for the stain that came to his side the spear that went into his side that has taken care of whatever crisis you may be going through that in the midst of it sometimes you know uh you may think well because i've given my heart to jesus um i should not go through crisis no crisis will come the bible says in this world we will have tribulation but it's saying be of good cheer i have overcome the world it will give you the grace it will give you the strength to go through that tribulation it will be there with you that when those tears are pouring down your eyes you will not cry alone jesus will be right there to take you by the hand he will carry you in his hand he will move you through even the thick and thin of life and at the end of it all beloved the most important thing is this that at the end of time at the end of day that the blood and the death and the resurrection of jesus will not be in vain in our life and how can we believe how can we affirm that it will not be in vain that is if every one of us listening to me today that we all make heaven together that's the ultimate thing at the end of it all that none of us will be missing when the trump of the lord will sound at the end of it all we ensure that we live the life of christ that we do not miss it on the day of the rapture beloved as i wrap up this morning i want to encourage you that jesus has settled it he has paid that price for you this is the time for you to walk in that realization walk in that victory walk as a believer he has given you that power to exercise dominion to make decree and declaration and as you do that you continually live the life of victory in the name of jesus i just want to pray with you very quickly i don't know if you're here you are still trusting god Maybe you're not saved and you're saying, Lord, I want to just give my heart to you. And beyond that, you're trusting God for one thing or the other. You're trusting God for the healing of your body. You're trusting God for God to do something specifically for you in this morning of resurrection. Why not just bow your heads in prayers as we pray to agree together even today. I just want to pray with you. You are not saved. You're watching me on Facebook Live. You're not born again. This is the time for you to, you know, come into a relationship with jesus and have jesus to 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 walk upon your heart you know you can start on this journey with him that that blood must not be in vain in your life that death of jesus must not be in vain in your life why not just tell the lord even very quickly this morning and say father i open up myself i come unto you today i ask oh god that you forgive me of my sins lord wash me with your blood in the name of jesus make me clean white as snow in the name of the lord in jesus mighty name we have prayed whatever it is you're trusting god for this morning i want you to agree with me by faith that this day as we celebrate the resurrection of jesus that that i may know him and the power of his resurrection that that power will be real in your life that power will be real in your family whatever it is you're there as a couple you want to agree to get on something hold the end of your wife hold the ends of your children together and begin to agree together you're there just just trust god for this that in this morning of resurrection you're going to encounter god father we just want to thank you this morning we give you praise for that which you've done we exalt your holy name we thank you lord because 
of your death on the cross of Calvary that it is not in vain in our lives. I pray for every one of your children watching me, oh God, Father, listening to me even today or those that will listen to this broadcast later. I pray that the power of resurrection, Father, will come alive in their home we come alive in their lives in the name of jesus i pray for healing of their bodies anyone that is sick i ask that the healing power of jesus will move into that body right now we break the grip of sickness from their life and we raise them up from the bed of affliction oh god whatever it is they're trusting god for those looking up to you for the fruit of the womb in this morning the power of resurrection we search through their body in the name of Jesus. And I decree you receive your child, your children in the name of Jesus. You're there listening and trusting God. I say, God, I want you to settle me. Settle me maritally, settle me financially, settle me my career. I pray for you today that God will make it happen for you in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you glory because we know you've answered. Receive all the honor there, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Happy Easter and happy celebration. Always remember, Jesus has paid the price. Begin to walk and continue to walk in that victory. God bless you. Over to you, sir.